on September 12, 1958. Texas Instruments engineer Jack St. Clair Kilby demonstrated the world's first integrated circuit. When he applied electricity to the device, it started a sine wave rippling across his oscilloscope. That little wave was a signal of big change. With the invention of the integrated circuit, also known as the microchip, Kilby had pointed TI and the world down a new path. Many of today's electronics couldn't have been developed without the integrated circuit. It virtually created the computer industry. It restructured communications, allowing people, businesses, and nations to exchange information in a host of new ways. And it made it possible for humans to fly to the moon and begin exploration deeper in space. Today, the integrated circuit is part of the DNA of a wide variety of medical equipment. It's revolutionized education, transportation, energy conservation, public safety, and entertainment. Where might the integrated circuit take us next? If the past is any indication, then what seems like science fiction today might be reality tomorrow. Jack Kilby was tall, humble, and soft-spoken. He didn't look or act like a man who would change the world. He joined Texas Instruments in 1958 because he shared the company's enthusiasm for miniaturization. They were really the only one that offered to let me work full-time on the kind of thing I wanted to do. I could have started at Motorola, and they thought that uh, I could work on this stuff half-time and work on their transistor products the other half. Kilby soon began work on his idea of combining all the components of a circuit into a single semiconductor. Detailed notes and sketches led to the first working integrated circuit, a single transistor, some resistors, and a capacitor connected on a slice of germanium less than half an inch long. Kilby's first goal for the integrated circuit was just to make electronics more efficient and less costly. Even he was surprised by the tremendous impact of his invention. The integrated circuit has made possible a, a million-fold decrease in the cost of electronics. We had no basis for even guessing what new applications that would open up. Jack Kilby went on to pioneer military, industrial, and commercial applications of microchip technology. He headed teams that built integrated circuits for both the first military system and the first computer incorporating microchips. And with fellow TI engineers Jerry Merriman and Jim Van Tassel, Kilby developed the first handheld electronic calculator. Jack Kilby's body of work includes more than 60 patents. He was widely recognized for his innovations and his impact on the world, and he inspired untold numbers of engineers. Kilby won an inventor's triple crown for his accomplishments, the National Medal of Science, the National Medal of Technology, and the Nobel Prize in Physics. And he was inducted into the National Inventors Hall of Fame alongside Henry Ford, Thomas Edison, and the Wright brothers in the Annals of American Innovation. He passed away on June 20, 2005 in Dallas. Yet he continues to inspire engineers at Texas Instruments and beyond. I'll never forget the day that Jack came to my office immediately after returning home from receiving the, the uh, Nobel Prize and he reached into his coat pocket and he pulled out a small object that was wrapped in a piece of tissue and it has name neatly printed on it. He said, this is for TI. And I opened the package and there was the gold Nobel Prize medal. It's a time like that where you don't even know what to say or can't think of what to say. But the bottom line, that was Jack. The invention of the integrated circuit laid the foundation for the field of microelectronics. It's one of the most significant developments of the 20th century, arguably the most significant. For Texas Instruments, the invention has played a pivotal role. Over the years, TI has produced billions of chips for its customers, enabling a tremendous range of products. But the integrated circuit has done more than help TI grow. It's made an entire industry grow. 
Since 1961, the worldwide electronics market has increased from $29 billion to nearly $1.5 trillion. In its first 50 years, the integrated circuit revolutionized computing, communications, and entertainment. Jack Kilby's first simple circuit became the invention that's at the heart of modern invention. Today, with help from TI Technology, innovative engineers are creating amazing new breakthroughs in energy, increasing energy efficiency and harvesting new forms of power, in public safety, where new technology allows fire stations to monitor the vital signs of firefighters. 3D facial recognition provides fast access and extra security, and automotive vision capabilities help cars see the road ahead and assist in navigation decisions. And in medicine, with devices such as high-quality ultrasound machines, portable visual stethoscopes, and bionic limbs. What will the next 50 years bring the world? Or the next 500? TI is finding answers. We're helping develop semiconductor technologies that make the world smarter, healthier, safer, greener, and more fun. Jack Kilby's engineering genius changed the world, but people are just beginning to appreciate another of his legacies. He left behind an outstanding collection of his photography. His passion for photography was known only to his family and a few close friends, but despite the demands of his career, he was a serious and prolific photographer. The creativity he showed as an engineer was also clear in his photos, which display great sensitivity and beauty. His subjects range from industrial architecture to urban and street scenes, landscapes, and people. And sometimes they displayed a wry sense of humor. Kilby built his own dark room and printed his own black and white negatives. He showed real ingenuity in composing his images, as well as in manipulating and cropping his prints. In this photo, for example, he made a copy negative using high contrast film to completely remove gradations of gray. This created a stark, abstract effect in pure black and white. Appropriately enough, considering his chosen career, his technique was often experimental. He shot from a variety of angles and vantage points. The extreme camera angles often gave his images abstract patterns, sometimes like geometric grids, perhaps echoing other aspects of his life. Much of his work is now part of the De Gaulle Library at Southern Methodist University in Dallas.